Okay, well, welcome to this executive interview with uh, Fernando Vivas, the Chief Commercial Officer from uh, NH Hotel Group. Fernando, how are you? I am doing great. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Um, so we're here together as uh, Fernando's actually joining us as one of our key judges in, uh, in the panel on sustainability and operations on the 23rd of November. But we are running as part of Hospitality Marketplace, which is an online event dedicated to the hospitality sector. Where effectively, we're connecting the sector with the latest innovation. So we're going to have uh, a full uh, a full day, if you like, uh, packed with some of the latest innovation in four different episodes uh, starting next week from the 15th, 16th, 22nd, 23rd of November, which days dedicated to revenue, maximization, distribution, uh, direct bookings and operation sustainability. So today's conversation is very much uh, anticipation to what the event has for us in store. And we're going to find the perspective from uh, Fernando uh, from an NH Hotel Group um, point of view. Um, what are the main insights that uh, Fernando's been observing over the past um, few months? So welcome again, Fernando. Uh, it's great to be here. And uh, tell us a little bit about the business model there at NH Hotel Group and uh, how would you say the, the latest sort of uh, economic uh, outlook has impacted your business? Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Christina, for having me. It's uh, Well, first, uh, thank you for the question because one of the things that um, th that makes a difference uh, on a company with the size of an age hotel group is our business model itself. So take into account that we do not franchise. This is a strategic choice that uh, for now we are still keeping. So we are not franchising hotels, which basically means that we operate and we manage 100% of our properties. It means that we control the operational promise, we control our branding, and in many cases, uh, and in most of the cases, we control as well the technology that we are using in our properties. It's through that uh, we have been impacted <laughs> as anybody else uh, with, uh, with the pandemic, which has been horrible, taking into account that out of the almost 400 hotels that we operate today, at one certain point, we had over 380 hotels being fully closed. So as a hotelier that I am, you can imagine how that felt. But uh, we are having an incredible uh, year, uh, 2022, uh, since the month of April, we've seen that pent-up demand how is, is coming back to business and all most of our KPIs, they are all improving uh, 2019 numbers. Uh, we just published our quarterly results uh, yesterday and uh, we have record revenue figures, record EBITDA figures, net profit and margins. So the focus that we have put not only on the top line, but as well on the, on the cost and uh, on profitability, it's uh, it's been paying off for sure. That's brilliant to hear. That's brilliant to hear. I think a lot of the knock-on impact of all these economic factors is certainly on pricing, and um, uh, we've seen pricing go in right up, uh, and also to match a little bit of the the soaring rates, right, uh, on energy and inflation, and everything else that's happening. And how have you seen? How have you been able to? protect your margins um, in that respect? And have you seen pricing going up across the board there as well? Well, first, um, first we need to say that those gurus that during the pandemic suggested that the corporate travel would never come back, that people would not need to meet face-to-face -face because presentations through Teams or Zoom meetings were going to replace those meetings, I think they were all wrong. And just to give you a number, uh, only in the month of September and October, uh, more than 50% of our segmentation has been on the B2B side. This is including corporate travel. This is including FITs, leisure groups, crews, uh, and of course, meeting and events, MICE, the MICE component of our properties, which even in the month of October has been over 35% of our sales. So with that in mind, uh, and, and of course, this is the result of a, uh, a lot of hard work from the commercial team. It's uh, what we are doing is work on what we know how to do best and how at least I see that hotels needs to be commercialized. And this is focusing on the segmentation. So we've never put all the eggs on the B2C side. Uh, we understand that the only way to continue with sustainable profitability in hotels is through having the uh, 
best and the healthiest segmentation possible. And that's how we work on almost uh, every hotel, which has the chances, of course, to uh, to find the right balance in terms of segments, channels, feeder markets, and the accounts that are producing into these properties. So the recipe, at least, I, I believe, that for our success, when you look at how we, far, we have performed against other peers and how we are performing on our RGI results, which incrementals from 2019 and with the record absolute numbers is the focus that we had had in the segmentation uh, since the pandemic and not losing and, and throwing the towel on, on the B2B side. And I guess also understanding more of the net ref bar there is actually quite critical uh, to identify where the key accounts that ult ultimately will help you bring back the business that, that you need. Um, what would you say um, in terms of the major changes around your business mix? How, have you seen a lot of shifts in source markets as well? Well, we've seen, it, it depends on the quarter. At the beginning of the recovery, uh, we were very strong on the domestic market. Uh, and since I would say since the month of June, July, we've seen how the feeder market mix has changed as well. And this is due as well to the uh, excellent capillarity that we have in terms of distribution and the awareness of the brands that we operate. And uh, actually, one, uh, one insight that I would like to share with you is that in the month of August and September, we reached the higher contribution of international travels, travelers in the company ever, in the history of the company. With over 60% of our, of our sales were driven by non-domestic revenues. So that's, as you can imagine, that's been as well changing and impacting on the ADA and the on our ref bar, take into account that the numbers are very clear. International customers, at least in our company, they pay around 30% higher uh, ADR than domestic, and they spend between 30 to 50% higher on all the revenues. So this is a market that we were targeting uh, since ever, at least since I joined NH, and we started the, our yeah, international feeder market commercial strategy, and it has paid off as well as soon as the demand has been able to recover. In terms of your strat your distribution strategy, would you say there are any particular limitations that you are addressing at the moment? Well, it's um, we've uh, we've changed uh, our strategy in terms of distribution uh, in the last three years. We had um, we always pushed for diversification. So we thought that having the X spread in different baskets was the key to success, not adding all the S, all the X just in the same basket. And uh, we changed this strategy two years ago and we bet it for uh, consolidation. So one of the things that we have done is consolidate our distribution. Uh, this is giving us not only, in our, in our opinion, the same level of capillarity that we had before, but is giving us more control of the product, of the prices, and uh, on when exactly and where we want to be distributed. So that's been a big change that we've done. We've always have a healthy wave of our direct sales, which is more than 50% of, of what we sell. It doesn't mean direct uh, web. And, and, and again, pushing for our brand website, um, even though we always say that we are channel agnostic, which basically means that uh, we want to be present on whatever channel the consumer feels more comfortable on booking. There are some distribution partners that give us not only the visibility, but as well the capillarity in those markets where we may not have that brand recognition or that brand awareness, but of course, our intention, and this is how we invest our marketing money, is that if somebody knows an NH or an NH collection, a Tivoli or an Anantara property, uh, if they know us and they want to come to our properties, our best uh, value proposition is going to be always direct. And it's really, it's really interesting and really insightful that a over 50% of your distribution to date comes direct. I think a lot of consumers are really turning to the direct channels to enjoy a much more personalized experience, a lot more flexibility, right? Or uh, particularly uh, during the pandemic as they were looking to avoid a lot of those intermediaries. But also I think it's a really good uh, opportunity for hotels to communicate a lot of their uh, added value proposition in the draft channel and that ultimately helps them further uh, immerse the guests through the into that experience is also the uh, the the additional added value and building that relationship with the guests what sort of changes have you um, have you been doing around your direct bookings um, uh, segment and and, and strategy uh, per se um, to, mm -hmm. to really continue stimulating direct bookings 
Very good. I mean, I need to go back to the segmentation and what uh, I mentioned at the beginning, which is uh, when we look at commercialization and distribution, it's not only B2C, but it is as well B2B. So we started with uh, with a project already in 2017, 2018, that uh, it took a little bit of time to put together uh, in terms of technology, value proposition, that it's called NH Pro. So one of the things that we have done is focusing on the B2B side on our website for professionals. So there are three customer personas that we are targeting on uh, on our brand website, uh, which is called nhpro.com. And throughout NH Pro, we want to target the corporate traveler, the travel agent, and the meeting planner. And there is a unique value proposition for these three persona types. Uh, just to give you an example, during the pandemic, we did not only launch NH Pro, but we launched a program for a small and medium accounts. So it's true that big corporations, they are still behind 2019 uh, in terms of production, and they will probably take longer to, to from, I, my understanding is that it will be from two to four years to fully recover from 2019. But the reality is that corporate travel is still huge when we look at the long tail. So NH Plus, which was the program that we launched, NH Plus Business Program, is a digital program that we have launched within NH Pro, specifically directed for the small and medium account. So the more you book, you get further discounts, it's fully dynamic, and we are able to give different value added to the consumer, um, depending on the number of room nights that they spend in our properties. So this is just to give you an example. When we look at the um, uh, the third persona, segment persona that I was mentioning, which was the meeting planners, during the pandemic, we developed our own instant booking tool for meeting space. Today, we can say that out of the 400 properties that we operate, 250, they have instant booking capabilities for meeting rooms and groups uh, below 20 people. 20 people. So that's giving us a chance as well to get to a different consumer, consumers which are trying to find a digital experience. And this is something that is growing our direct sales through our brand website, but not necessarily only thinking on the B2C side. Well, that's a huge opportunity. Uh, and um, I think B2B is such an important segment. And if we were to talk for a moment about B2C, what sort of initiatives are you developing there? Oh, very good. I mean, we are working on, uh, of course, um, there are two ways you drive sales uh, on your website. Uh, and the first is how you get the traffic uh, to your website. And then, of course, the ADR, this is in the uh, in the hands of our revenue management team. And the third is conversion. Uh, so this is what we have been working uh, in, in, in the end. It's how we continue optimizing our uh, our growth and our traffic acquisition. And in terms of um, in terms of conversion, we have been paying a lot of attention to our content, uh, the booking process, how we are uh, showing our prices to the consumer. So we are doing uh, different pilots uh, as we speak on the different ways. This is a project that we called the, the, the pricing grid on how we show prices to the consumer and how they are able to choose between non-prepaid rates, prepaid rates, flexible rates, half board, breakfast inclusive on a more... I would say, lean way to what uh, most of the hotel chains uh, are doing today. And of course, when we talk about sales, I mean, ADR has been key. And, uh, and we have put a lot of effort on our pricing and revenue management strategy to secure that uh, we were able to capture as much ADR as possible. Just to offset what you were mentioning before, these incremental costs that we are having everywhere, not only payroll, but at the same time, energy cost, uh, F&B cost, everything. And I think I think um, uh, I think uh, understanding the profile of each gas, understanding really the opportunity of the whole gas, and capturing that data that they span both for rooms but also around the property becomes quite essential, right? Uh, to be able to grow the total revenue picture, whether the guest is in house or whether the guest comes from outside to enjoy the various amenities across the hotel. And I think that's really a, a pretty strong opportunity to create a much more integrative and collaborative uh, approach with the room strategy. What would you say uh, um, percentage-wise of uh, your total revenue is represented by zero revenues? Yeah, well, it's uh, close to 30% of our revenues are what we call internally all the revenue component. Um, I cannot give you further details, but this is including meeting space, this is including room service, minibar contribution, our restaurants, our bars. 
So when you look at 30%, I mean, this is a huge amount of money and a company that it's almost 2 billion in terms of turnover. Um, my point here, and when we discuss this internally, is we have 400 hotels. Our hotel average has two point of sales. You may have a restaurant and you may have a bar. This is the average. Uh, there are hotels which have more than three or four. And when you look at resorts, even six point of sales. So if you would look at the number of uh, F&B point of sales that we have in our group, this is close to, let's say, between 800 to 1,000 F&B point of sales. So if we wouldn't be a hotel chain, but if we would be an F&B operator with, let's say, 1,000 point of sales, uh, how much effort we would be putting into optimizing only our FME component. So this is something that we are paying a very strong attention. We are looking into, uh, when we look at FMB, not only pricing, but menu engineering, uh, how we uh, touch base with operations, how we define our shifts. So it's not only from the revenue component, but as well from the optimization point point of view of the profitability and in terms of cost. Then you look at meeting space. What are we doing in terms of meeting space optimization? Uh, we have been able to apply dynamic pricing for meeting rooms um, for years. And, and uh, how do we continue optimizing that? And as the market becomes more digital and we are empowering consumers to actually book direct, you need to fine tune very well your pricing and revenue management strategy for meeting space. Otherwise, uh, you're going to make a disaster. Oh, if, if, uh, if you set the wrong strategy uh, in the system and this strategy is it's flying around or being in um, on our instant booking tool uh, system, which is called Click and Meet, uh, and then we are receiving the bookings with, with the wrong rate. So this is something that your operations, your revenue management, everybody needs to be as well fully aligned. Completely aligned. And I think also to compl to continue to maximize that wallet span for each gas, you really have to have a, a pretty good um, strategy on personalization and retention efforts, but also leveraging the upselling and cross-selling with every touch point across that strategy and that gas journey. Mm -hmm. What sort of actions are you taking to, to increase that level of personalization and customization mm -hmm. for the guests to really help themselves with such a mm -hmm. variety of uh, of uh, experiences that that your properties offer absolutely well it's um how we see it is on how can we impact on the entire customer journey and the customer uh, there are different impacts that you can uh, give to this customer depending on when they are on this journey. It can be when they are just on the uh, searching, on the discovery phase, or when they are booking, or when they are the days before arrival, or when you are checking in, uh, even uh, after the check-in, because they may. So our approach is, again, it's very holistic. Uh, we are trying to see how we can impact on every of the, on the different touch points that we can do. And, and of course, automation is, uh, is the key to success. So uh, technology is crucial. We are lucky enough to share the same technology on 99.9% .9 of the hotels that we operate. Uh, and that's giving us a chance to implement tools such as our fast pass uh, capability, which is our online check-in capability, where we give not only the online check-in uh, capability to the consumer, but as well, what we call internally, the choose your room. So the customer, at the same time, before arrival, they are able to choose a room as they would do on a plane. They can see the different room types, they can see the different supplements, and then they can choose to upgrade themselves if they want to. Of course, we have communication with the consumers before they arrive, if they do not check in online. And, uh, and during the, uh, the check-in process, we have, in this case, not automated, but we have a very sophisticated, I would say, a process uh, on how to upsell to our consumers. Not only with the aim of increasing the average order value of the guest and the ADR, but at the same time, our approach is on how we can improve the customer experience. If somebody is willing to upgrade to a better room, to a superior room, to feed, a room with better views, a bigger, with a different um, a bedding uh, and so forth, it means that they have the means to pay for it and they will enjoy better the experience in our hotel. So it serves from the operational perspective and customer service. And then, of course, from the point of view of how can we continue increasing our, our revenues and our margins. Well, that's super insightful. Thank you very much, Fernando. I think just before we go, it'd be really interesting to understand um, how do you, what is your model around identifying technology needs uh, at the Nature Hotel Group? Well, we, uh, we have what we call the, uh, the innovation circle. 
And this is something that it's, it's led by our chief marketing officer. And uh, what we do is we normally have different pitches from different startups coming to an age every two, three years. So we look at the different needs that we have, and then we bring uh, startups and entrepreneurs to be able to show us what they are doing. Uh, one of the good things that uh, the marketplace that you guys are organizing is that uh, you are making this available not only for an age, but for everybody. And our opinion is that uh, politicians, they do not change the world. They just need to make things easy for entrepreneurs who are the ones who bring the spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship uh, to change the world. So, um, so that's what we try to do. So uh, listen to entrepreneurs, listen to these startups, and then see what's in the market and how we can apply, if not that provider, how we can get insightful information on how we need to move forward into the future. And I think you just told us what's the value of hospitality marketplace to everyone that's watching. So we're really, really, um, really it's grateful. It's priceless what you are organizing. It's priceless. Uh, really, really mind. grateful for all the insights. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Please, Fernando. No, I wanted to say that, uh, unfortunately, when I started uh, with revenue management, uh, there was only Cornell offering revenue management uh, training and, uh, and education, which I took. Uh, from there, I have to say that my learnings, my self-education has always been thanks to different companies, providers, entrepreneurs, startups that were trying to innovate to innovate somehow. And from there, see how those strategies would be applied in the companies that I was working for. So that's why I believe that the marketplace, it's absolutely priceless what we are doing. And I'm convinced that those who are attending will be able to get uh, insight, inform, lots of insights on, 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 on how the market and the industry is going to move forward in the future. Surely, you surely have inspired us and you, have, you will inspire everyone else watching this video. And we will see you all on next week on the 15th of November, starting Hospitality Marketplace with the Revenue Maximization episode, followed on the 16th by the Distribution episode, 22nd of November, Direct Bookings, and 23rd of November, Operations and Sustainability. You will find a link and all the relevant links to register for the upcoming event uh, in this video. Thank you very much, Fernando. It was uh, wonderful Good. to have you here with us today. Thank you for having me. Have a good See one. See you all. See you all Cheers. next week. Cheers. Thank you.